the, the last um, topic that we just started. Um, so, so we're talking about uh, uh, partitions of numbers. The easiest one is into uh, odd and even. So infinitely many numbers split into only two classes. Okay, two subsets. Okay, and so as you can see, there, there are uh, the that is another word for that situation is a partition, split into a partition, uh, meaning that the two sets are disjoint and they cover the whole thing. Okay, the uh, what we're pursuing here is to begin with uh, is algebra of 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 these sets, pretty much. Okay, and um, uh, uh, so we started with odd and even, and odd plus even. Uh, even plus odd and so on uh, provide us one, one again, w once again with a specific answer what it is odd plus odd is even like that same with with multiplication um, but really what uh, when, when things become uh, more interesting is when we look at other uh, divisors okay so not just two that's what for even numbers but look at, at the uh, a divisor, so is specifically uh, the remainder theorem is what, what uh, uh, make, makes that possible. Okay, so, uh, so, so, so that uh, we classify, we classify the, um, the numbers, uh, all the integers, in terms of the remainders on uh, the division of a particular specific number n. Okay, so n is, is what's fixed. Okay, fixed uh, one at a time. Uh, so that it wouldn't sound too made up, uh, a few examples are in order to, to illustrate this uh, uh, theorem and why we do it. It is, uh, uh, say, so n is, say, how about 60? So, any familiar thoughts about divisibility by 60. Anything from familiar you see in divisibility by 60. Seconds and minutes. Okay, seconds and minutes because there are many, literally there are infinitely many seconds in a row going the same with minutes, uh, but if you want to do algebra with them, so for the end, then you throw out the uh, whichever goes over 60, as many times as necessary. So 50 plus 70 uh, gives you 120, uh, which is zero. Okay, so that's that's the algebra that that we're going to be uh, discussing. Okay, so so once again, uh, you you can add seconds naturally if you may measure time, but uh, the different look at seconds is only uh, they run between zero and 60. Uh, or rather, zero and fifty-nine. Let's be, let's be careful here. Okay. So the, these are the the, the, the possible remainders of the, 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 the dividing an integer by sixty. Uh, they run between uh, zero and fifty-nine. So there are no sixty such a thing as sixty seconds. Uh, there is only uh, zero then. Okay. So you start counting seconds on the clock. It goes over with sixty. Uh, go reaches sixty seconds. It's zero again. Okay. So that is kind of circular pattern that they get, we're going to be seeing. So, uh, so just like uh, when n is equal to 2, you have odd even, odd even. It's just a, the same cycle, only very short, because one, one step. So 0, 0, 1, like this. So 0, 1. That, that's even. And here you start with 0, and then you go 1, 2, 3, uh, until 59, like this. So that's what clock says. And then, so, okay, one example. We'll look into the actual algebra later on. Right now, we're only looking at sets, but still example is uh, necessary. How about 12? Divisibility by 12. Or 24. What am I talking about? Hours. Yes. Same, same exact story. So once again, cycle will be the, uh, that, that thing over there. See, behind you. Right behind you. Yes. <laughs> that that gives you that cycle that uh, how you go with uh, 12 hours, 60 minutes, and 60 seconds in one place. Okay, so that is, and you can see cancellation. It reaches the full full turn. It becomes zero again. Okay, so 12, uh, 60, and 60. 
Okay, then uh, we'll certainly can guess this one. Days. Okay. Can you think of anything else? Weeks. Uh, well, the, there is something there. First of all, n is seven. I, I don't think that you you want to say weeks. You can only want to say weekdays. So then uh, it is n seven. They are they are not technically numbers, but they are. Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday until Sunday, and then you start cycling again. It's that cyclicity you'll see if you have a calendar, right? You have a calendar, and you can see how you go. Uh, you, you you change a page, and you go back to Monday or Sunday if you prefer. So so weekdays or days of, uh, days of the week. Um, Three sixty. Degrees. Degrees. You can think of many others, obviously. But so that's what divisibility, uh, divisibility comes from. All of these are numbers. They come from integers, and but then we cut them into uh, because we we don't want to deal with infinity. We cut them into into pieces, and then uh, it's still even though they are not real numbers as we as we know them, right? Especially weekdays, but the algebra can be done with them, right? So if you 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 might be interested in what happens this many seconds followed by that many seconds how many seconds is that so what would a clock show in terms of seconds and that, that's how you do it you divide uh, so you have 50,000 seconds how, how many seconds is it on the clock you divide by 60 and the remainder will tell you right so divide by 60 okay and then wh whatever that is and the remainder remainder the remainder is um, is the the position of the hand, right? Okay, so that apply, applies to everything else, but the, the, that's the main idea. So, uh, so as you can see, it is a very little piece of mathematics, and the, the, I just didn't want to uh, uh, leave it as uh, hanging there. Uh, without anything uh, specific in real life, and that, that's a bunch of them. And you can just keep going, and uh, you can think of uh, uh, other other things as well. How how they cancel and how uh, they uh, they cycle. Okay, so uh, so by the way, there is there is a there is a uh, if I put two pi here, that is, you can you can certainly match it up to the previous one, but it's you, you can see how things become more complicated. If uh, and it's not n, it's not about divisibility anymore, right? It's, it's seemingly about, still about uh, rotation, uh, about angles, right? And they cancel out after 2 pi, right? So you it start to repeat so itself, but it's not about integers. So, so that is another uh, for us to, um, uh, to think about uh, what it means. It, they, they are very closely related topic. But we'll start with the, with the divisibility. Okay, so that is our theorem. It has, pr has proven, once again, two parts. This time emphasize the, the point that uh, uh, the representation is, uh, uh, there is a representation and its unique existence and uniqueness right there. Okay, so the, uh, the terminology that we use is, um, um, is this, um, if x and y have the same remainder under divisible under under division by by n then we say x and y are congruent modula n okay x equal y well we never say equal but this, this is the notation. X equals sign mod n. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes, or alternatively, x, three lines, congruent, one, mod n. Okay, so that is the, the relation that we, uh, we care about. Um, so, like, just as an example, 5 is 1 mod 2. Okay, so 
uh, we'll look more, more into that. Uh, this is how you pro pro progress uh, doing algebra with the with the remainders. But uh, we'll start with uh, with with sets, uh, rather those partitions. And so let's let's take a look at it. So suppose um, n is fixed. Okay. Then uh, uh, then um, then there are n sets. Uh, say x sub n for each of the remainders. Okay, so um, so in other words, x sub n, uh, not x sub n, but x sub k, is the set of all integers. Uh, with remainder k under division by n. In other words, x sub k is uh, x mod congruent to k mod n. Okay. So once again, as an example, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we have if n is equal to one, uh, I'm sorry, two, then we only have a positive uh, negative. So this will be uh, these these will be um, uh, there will be only odd and even only. So uh, these are even, and these are odd. And then you can say that this is like x1, and this one x0. So a remainder is either 0 or 1. OK, and then, uh, then you do the same with n equal 3. Uh, so what you're going to have is, once again, there, there will be now how many? Two, uh, three, uh, three sets uh, looking very different. So either divisible by 3, starting with divisible by 3, so it will be 0, 3, 6, and so on, right? So 6 here. And then you take uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, remainder is 1. It will be just 1, shift to the right. 1, 4, 7, okay? And then, and then what's left is the ones that are remainder 2. So uh, x two. Okay, and then on and on. So that continues on. As you can see, uh, the the split is 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 uh, uh, is uh, um, um, what? Um, no, not not the way we, we we would like to think about splitting like something like this, and we split it in half like this. But as you can see, they are intermingled like this. Sets are not not really. They they don't. Uh, uh, have uh, elements next to each other. In fact, they always separate. Uh, you also can see the uh, uh, the um, uh, cyclicity of this, especially in n equal three. You can see blue, green, uh, orange, blue, green, orange, and so on. So you're going in cycles, uh, covering all the uh, all the uh, integers here. Uh, in fact, you probably could. Uh, that, that, that's how you can start with zero, one, two, three. Four, five, six. This is here. N is equal to seven. Okay. So, and what I have listed here are the remainders uh, under division by uh, by seven. Okay. So there are a total of uh, seven of them. And then, and then, as you add one to your number, you will be progressing uh, uh, along the the cycle until you reach zero again, and then you keep going. Okay. So, in other words. You can think of it as if you have a, uh, uh, you have your, uh, all, you take all your real, uh, all your integers, all your integers are like an infinite strip, infinite strip of, 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 of numbers like this, going to infinity there and there. So what do you do with it? You roll it like this. And so there are infinite like this, so very tightly, so that you'll have only, say, seven positions on it. Okay, so, so it means that it rolls infinitely many times. 
along it. Okay, so um, you may have seen something like that. Uh, I mean, you have seen something like that. It is, uh, what does it look like from calculus maybe three? What? Well, well, I, <laughs> no, there is no width. Uh, there is no width. It's, but it is, it is more like a circle, all right? So remember, circle, uh, parameter curves, circle. So even though parameter, uh, the curve is defined on the whole real line, right, its path is a circle. So well, how? Because it cycles infinitely many times around it. Okay, so, so that, that's, that's how it works, and it's very simple, except we're dealing with integers only at this time. Okay, so, um, so what we want to do here, the uh, illustration is, is all good. What we want to demonstrate now, really, is, uh, is that we do, under this definition, want to show that these uh, uh, sets are indeed, uh, well, they, they provide a partition. Okay, so let's, let's do that uh, quickly. So... Um, theorem, so n is uh, greater than 1, is an integer, then x0, xn form a partition of z. Okay? Well, let's point out the proof at least. So, um, Partition two properties that we have, um, um, uh, we cover everything and then we have, uh, we have the edges joined. So, so property one or, or requirement one or axiom one uh, is that x1 union x2 xn is equal to z. Why is it true? So once again, in case you forgot, these are remainder. These are remainders. So though those subscripts are the remainders. Uh, I'm sorry, you got it with zero and n with n minus one. That that is actually quite important, actually, right? So uh, so uh, over here, same same thing here. So there is no x n because n is equal to zero, in that sense. Okay, so why do we get the whole z? So in other words, what we want to say is, uh, is uh, uh, so every integer belongs to at least one x sub k. Why? Yeah, because always there is a remainder, and we, we then, um, there is also always a remainder according to, according to what? The remainder theory, yes. In fact, if you want to be specific, it is the first part of the remainder theorem, the existence, right? And then you can probably guess, then the second part will help us with the second axiom. Uniqueness, Uniqueness right. So, so axiom two is uh, that uh, uh, we have uh, xk, uh, how about xi, xi inter interse uh, intersection xj, that the disjointness of these sets is empty if i is not equal to j. So what we're saying is that, uh, uh, so very carefully, once again, writing out all of these statements in a, um, in a logical way. So what we're saying here, every, everything can be rewritten in terms of uh, sets, intersections, unions, and so on, empty, non-empty, and so on, and, and that's what we're trying to do. So as you can see, we did over there, every integer belongs to at least one xk. So there is, this is an existence. There is, there is such a k. That's what we're saying here. Now, what we're saying here is that uh, uh, every, every uh, integer uh, belongs to at most one. one xk uh, 
Yes. At most one. So the intersection is uh, empty. So one element cannot belong to two. Okay? So at most, and then at most means that uh, uh, that's, that's what the uniqueness um, um, guarantees. So once again, I'm explaining why every integer belongs to uh, at most one x sub k and uh, uh, the y because uh, there can be only one remainder according to the remainder theorem again, the other part. the uniqueness. End of proof. So any uh, questions about it? Um, so it follows from the remainder theorem and pretty much nothing else. Uh, just just carefully writing out logic, and you certainly can add some some stuff here to make it more convincing and more more uh, more detailed. Um, uh, but other than that, we are relying entirely on the theorem. As we can see, we are not trying to. Uh, uh, we do not. What we we did bring up uh, the definition of partition did not did come up, but the definition of a reminder did not because it was, that was all hidden inside of the remainder theorem. So we're using the remainder theorem, and uh, there is a word that interlap uh, using, uh, being used in this theorem, implicitly is the remainder, uh, and then do you go all the way to figure out to, with the definition what remainder is, and it turns out it's not, it's not always necessary. So if there's a theorem that you can use that uses the word remainder, well, just use it, and then uh, you don't have to uh, go all the way you know, to the way where everything starts. So as you can see, we did not do any algebra here. We rely entirely on the uh, remainder theory, which says, well, this is it. This is what we've got. Okay. So, uh, so there may, there is always a remainder. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, this is not hardly the end of the story. Uh, it is a different look at uh, at the. Um, at the part uh, at the this relation is indeed rather than thinking in terms of a uh, uh, partition and sets and subset in an empty intersection, we look at the relation between between two uh, numbers like this one. Okay, uh, the uh, the congruent congruent relation. So let's explore uh, the congruent relation or the congruency. So once again, x, y, mod, n. Uh, we, uh, we could uh, use the language of remainder, but just in case, let me write it out uh, in the form of, uh, of uh, in the algebraic form. So x is equal to qn plus r, y is equal to, say, pn plus r. That's what it means. So as you can see, r is the remainder for both of the numbers, uh, x and y, and it is the same. Okay. That's what it means. If you don't know, you don't even have to use the word remainder. You just you just look uh, that there, 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 these rep representations are possible. So, uh, mod n, yeah. So there are, there are these numbers, q, p, and r, okay, such that this is satisfied. Okay. So so there are certain properties of this relation. So as you can see, you pick two, any two numbers, x and y, and you can tell whether or not they're related or not in this manner. So property number one is, in fact, uh, trivial, kind of. x is congruent to itself. So we start with the obvious ones. Uh, x is congruent to itself. Y, I just, I just go uh, to, to justify it. To justify it, I'll just, uh, well, obviously, uh, we, uh, we, we, we're making statements, so they need proofs, even though those are obvious ones. Uh, in fact, the more obvious the proof is, the more, more likely you should be, be able to or willing to write it up. 
Okay, so this one is easy to write. You just you just write uh, x is equal to q. I'm, I'm looking at the what amounts to the definition right right there on the right is the what is behind that formula. So what I, all I do is just take that definition on the right, the part on the right, and just replace x with y, right? Uh, or rather, y I replace y with x. At, so the first line is the same, q n plus r, and then uh, uh, so there are there are p and q and r such that. So that's the, the phrase that I omitted, unfortunately. And here I have x is equal to pn plus r, uh, plus r prime. OK, so the, the question is there, rather, the, the, rather than uh, saying that there are, we, if we want to demonstrate that x is congruent to itself, uh, all we have to show is that uh, uh, in that representation that I have, uh, have here, what, do we, what are we supposed to demonstrate? r is equal to r prime, and how do you do it? Well, we did it once. Something similar. Subtract. Subtract, subtract <coughs> 0 equal to uh, q minus pn plus r minus r prime. So, so I, I, I think I, I, I overdoing this. Uh, we could have just referred to the remainder theorem. This was in, in, in the uniqueness proof of the remainder theorem, so we could just refer to it. Yeah, I, I, I may, may, may have overdone it. But that's, that's, uh, uh, that's not so bad. So uh, let's just say follows from part two, uniqueness of the remainder theorem. OK, so just, just a remark. This is called uh, reflexivity. reflexivity property, so reflecting on yourself, I guess, well, that's the point. Uh, this is called the symmetry. So uh, if x is, equal, uh, is congruent to y, then y, y is congruent to, congruent to x. So can you justify it? You can you can just examine the um, uh, ex examine the definition and uh, what it says that well this is what it says and what's happening is it's just uh, two properties that have to be satisfied simultaneously and then it's certainly a and b or b and a it's the same thing to say right so the conjunction and is I suppose commutative if you if you if you prefer so so once again a a that's let me justify it. follows from A and B equal to B and A. So two properties, once again, the order doesn't matter. Okay, the third one is slightly more interesting. Uh, it says that X is Y uh, congruent to Y mod N and, well, let's put N there. Uh, y congruent to z mod n, then you can guess that x is congruent to z mod n. OK. So, well, there, there is a little bit more work uh, to be done here. Um, so, so if, uh, X and Y have the same remainder, and Y and Z have the same remainder, then uh, uh, X and Z have the same remainder. It's kind of the same, what? Well, there is something to, demo to be demonstrated here, so let, 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 me, uh, let me try it. So, so we have three statements, let's connect them together. So, uh, I, I, and is crucial and is crucial uh, term here. So let me write it out. X 
is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, uh, x is equal to pn plus r, y is equal to qn plus s. Okay? That's the first statement, like this. The second statement is, I don't think I'm going to fit in here. Um, well, let's just do two. Uh, and then, the, 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 now, forget about the first one, doing the second one. y is equal to qn plus s, and uh, z is equal to, uh, what is left there? Uh, uh, un plus v. Okay? And, and uh, here r is equal to s, and here v is equal, s is equal to v. Okay? So I'm just rewriting uh, with the meaning of the, of the congruency. So x uh, is congruent to y mod n, means that they have the same remainder of the division by n, which is uh, what I wrote over there. Uh, and then the same thing with the second one, y and z have the same remainder, so s is equal to v. So well, you see what's happening then? Uh, r is equal to s, s is equal to v, so r is equal to v. And so, so I'm, I'm just living what, what matters this. So y is gone, y is gone, uh, so in this one uh, together with the with that uh, gives me gives me that. Okay, so so once again two statements, each of each of the two parts of the uh, of, of our uh, uh, conjunction on the left, uh, Purdue is has two equations, well some of the parts are not as important as others, but they have two representations once again under division and the remainders are given explicitly, and then I just, I didn't want to just use the same letter, I'm, I'm explicitly saying that R is equal to S, okay. And then I do the same with this other pair, Y and Z, okay. So once again, they, the, the remainders are S and V, and the, once again, they are uh, equal, okay. So, and then I just, uh, um, the, I, I guess what I'm, what is it? It's, uh, um, this is called transitivity. The, uh, the, uh, the, the, all of these three properties actually follow the properties of, of equality. So imagine two numbers equal to each other. They have, they satisfy the same three properties. So x is equal to x, okay. So forget about mod and what we're, gonna, what, what we're left with. So uh, look at these uh, three statements without mod there. They're, they're extremely familiar, right? So x is equal to x, well, we know that. X is equal to Y, then Y is equal to X, okay? And the third one, transitivity, if X is equal to Y and Y is equal to X, then naturally X is equal, I'm sorry, and Y equal to Z, then X equal to Z, okay? So, so the, the, these properties don't, don't come from nowhere, then they come from the uh, three properties of, of, of the relation which is being equal to or being equal to each other, okay? So, well, actually, to each other, that's what uh, part two make, makes them. The initial, uh, initial idea of two things being equal to each other is a, x is equal to y is not, and then you think about it a little bit and you realize that x is the same as to say y equal to x. Okay, so, so that, that certainly is, um, uh, well, after a while, in doing mathematics, you probably don't, don't pay attention to, to, to that uh, anymore. Or, you know, x equal to y is equal to y versus they're equal to each other, it's the same thing, but there, there is something to, uh, to, to worry about. Um, for example, when these properties do not, are not satisfied, is for example, instead of x equal y, how about x is larger than y? You see the problem? Well, how about larger than or equal to? Uh, Property two symmetry disappears, right? So you cannot, you cannot be. Uh, if x is larger than or equal to y, it does not mean that y is larger than or equal to x. Okay, so, so the that that is in truly the symmetric relation between between the two between between the two numbers, and that symmetry of of uh, of numbers simply being equal to each other now is uh, taken to a slightly different place, and that is. Uh, uh, numbers being equal modulo n. So in terms of, in other words, the remainders are equal, and that's what we have. But the, uh, the transitivity property of, of, of equality we just used here, uh, right, right here, it was, it was used, right? R equal to S, S equal to V, then R is equal to V. 
Okay, so so we just uh, implicitly uh, use that property as well as implicitly we also use the uh, the remainder theory, the uniqueness, right? So so all of these numbers they that they, they are in the first line and s in the second line we didn't we cannot tweak them. There are no others. So and at the end also we conclude that they're equal to each other once again. Uh, um, there is only one number. Uh, the, there is only one remainder per per number. Okay, so uh, okay, so that's a starting point of of what we call equivalence relations uh, that satisfy the exactly same properties, uh, three properties, and uh, uh, and they're uh, extremely uh, extremely general. And that's that's what we're going to explore first uh, before doing any modular arithmetic. So um, as you can see, uh, we already have two examples a way of, of properties of relations between numbers that satisfy these uh, three properties. And they are either equal, that is the most trivial example, uh, two numbers are equal to each other that satisfy these uh, three properties, uh, or modulo n uh, um, uh, relation, so congruency, congruency modulo n. Uh, but there are others, so well, well, let me write it out, these uh, three properties. In a, in a similar in a similar way in a, uh, a separate way so um, so given a set a set X an equivalence relation on X is a pairwise relation between its element elements any pair with elements I have an ex excessive I'll just let's say more prefer that satisfies those uh, three properties. So property one, reflexivity, x is equivalent to x. So this is the symbol that we use, uh, uh, equivalence. So that's uh, that, that little wiggle stands for equivalence. Uh, unfortunately, it's uh, used elsewhere for other purposes. It is used equivalency between 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 uh, propositions, uh, as well as between. In, I think in the web work sometimes they used for negation. That that is really unfortunate. Uh, symmetry x equivalent to y implies that y is equivalent to x, and finally transitivity. x equivalent to y and y equivalent to z implies that x equivalent to z. Okay, so example example zero, uh, x equivalent to uh, uh, x is say x is z's, uh, not x x capital is z. The set is z, and we define x equivalent to y if uh, x is equal to y. Okay, so. So as you can see, two numbers could be equivalent only when they're equal to each other. That is the trivial example of equivalence uh, uh, relation. And the second example, we already have x still is equal to z, but x equivalent to y if uh, x is y mod n, fixed n. Okay, so we just talked about that, the previous theorem. And now there, there are a bunch of examples from all over the mathematics when you see equivalence relations. Um, hmm. Where should we start? Um, well, uh, let's go back to what we did in this, in this, uh, 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 in this class. Uh, that would be equivalency between statements. So uh, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to, um, so statements. I can be more specific. Um, uh, equivalence between statements, uh, it's hard to point out what is the exactly set, what, what is the set of, of statements. So, uh, so I'll just, I'll just uh, put it in words rather than uh, formulas. So we're talking about all the statements and the two statements are equivalent when they're, uh, well, they're equivalent. Um, so is this an equivalence relation, equivalence between statements, uh, in other words, going backwards, 
both ways, is an equivalence relation. So our statement is equivalent to itself. Okay, uh, if x is equivalent to y, does it mean that y is equivalent to x? Yes. So once again, it is a two-sided, two-sided arrow. So yes. And then transitivity, x is equivalent to y, y to z, x equivalent to z. Also, we did it every time you do algebra uh, or computation, say x plus 1 is equal to 3, x plus 4 is equal to 6, x plus 3 is equal to 5. Okay, so every time you do something, uh, all of these statements are equivalent, and you know then, then where, where your starting point and ending point are the same, they're equivalent. And so you can even forget what's, what's in between. Okay, so yes, once again. Uh, so a non-example, once again, x larger than or larger than or equal to y, or vice versa, or, or x larger than y, so not an equivalence relation. Because you have to explain why, you just uh, test this. You, you actually, good idea to verify all the, uh, all the axioms, these axioms, and point out which, which ones are and are not satisfied. So in this particular case, you could say that uh, x is larger than or equal to y, uh, x. That is, that is okay. So reflexivity is okay, but not for the second one. Okay? Uh, the uh, symmetry is what fails. Right? So x larger than or equal to y does not imply that uh, y is larger than or equal to x. It could happen by accident, but it in general it does not, which makes it already not an equivalence relation. But notice that the transitivity condition is satisfied. So x larger than or equal to y and y is larger than or equal to z does imply that x is larger than or equal to z. Okay, so you never know which, which one is going to fail. Uh, in this particular case, as you can see, the third one, uh, the third one fails. Okay, so uh, a one more example from geometry. How about points? So x is uh, the plane. Okay, so points p is equivalent to q. Wait a minute. Uh, no, hold on. What, what is that? I have in my, uh, no, that's not what I meant. Uh, um, the um, so x is x is all lines, all lines on the plane. Can you think of uh, an equivalence relation on this? Yeah, we could two m two lines. If what? Can you think of an equivalence relation? Yeah, I, I was going to say, say parallel, but it's pretty much the same. Uh, two lines are, are equivalent if they're parallel. So as you can see, it's non-trivial relation because because there could be different lines. And, uh, and you, it's up to you, you, just, you, get, get, you can certainly just look at the properties and uh, one by one examine that they're true. So x is equivalent to x, obviously, x is parallel to y, then y is parallel to x, and then uh, the last one is slightly more complicated, but really not, not by much. So x, y, and z. So x uh, parallel to y, y parallel to z, uh, uh, z parallel uh, to x. Okay, so, so that works out again. And uh, you can certainly think of other things other than lines. How about planes in the space? So once again, are they parallel or not? Um, um, uh, related issue here. Now let's let's talk about functions. So let's let's take back a look at calculus. Uh, functions. Uh, how about differentiable functions? Uh, f on on the reals f equivalent to g if the derivatives are equal well uh, you can forget for a moment what what it means you you know probably you actually know a lot this is not a made up example uh, you know a lot about this equivalence relation, but if you even if if you don't, you can actually examine it what, what for what it is, the way it's defined, and confirm first that this is indeed an equivalence relation. So just just to do that, you will probably need a, need, need a few steps, and let's do that, and then we'll see if uh, uh, 
if you remember anything about the meaning of, of this equivalence relation. Uh, so f is equivalent to g, well, it's the same uh, to, to f, um, so they have the same derivative, right? Number two, f equivalent, uh, 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 derivative of f, okay, let's just put it this way. Uh, derivative of f is equal to derivative of g, then derivative of g is equal to derivative of f, so that's easy once again. Uh, reflex, uh, reflexivity is here, symmetry is there, so uh, the, the last one is also easy, right? f prime is equal to g prime, and g prime is equal to f, uh, to, to h prime, implies that f prime is equal to h prime. Okay, so it's very easy, as you can see, to see that there is a close relation, just about being, things, uh, functions being equal to each other rather than numbers, but it's still very close. Right, so it's about equalities, once again. Two functions are equal, or they're not equal, so that's, that's, that's uh, quite familiar. Uh, what is the point? I wonder if you remember from calculus, what is the point of this equivalence relation? <coughs> Two functions having the same derivative. What's the relation between them? Yes, uh, at every point. Okay. So, so indeed, that's exactly what this is says. Same slope, but what what's important is uh, at every point. So, remember what uh, what that means practically. What does the graph do the graph look like in comparison? What? Same what? They look the same, yes. Okay, that or is it just a parallel again? They, exactly, that's, that's my point. They are kind of parallel, except that it's not straight lines, but rather like this. Okay, so they are also known as the antiderivatives. And antiderivatives of the same functions, function are, they only differ by, by shift. They have exactly the same shape of the graph, they just shifted uh, vertically. In fact, so the whole meaning of, of this equivalence relation is here, right here. Remember, when you integrate, you get plus c. Well, that's, that's it. So that's how you get the whole class of uh, equivalence class like this. Okay, so we'll just uh, continue next time.